All right, so now we're going to be talking about what happens if my supply and my demand changes at the same time, at the same time. All right, so why are you being so wonky today? Okay, so if we are told that the price of, let's see here, what do I want to do? Let's go with some simple stuff. Let's say that there has been a new corn tortilla chip. No, 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 that's too complicated. Let's just say that there's a study that shows that corn is good for your health. How about that? So that's the first bit of information that we're given. The second bit of information that we're given is that there have been, it's a bumper year. for corn production, meaning they have more than they expect. So conditions, there's been favorable weather, has been perfect. So using that four-step process, right, we're going to have to do it for two different things now. So the first one, when we're talking about the study shows that corn is good for you, right? Well, number one, we've already done the first part of each process, which is great. The second step is we need to figure out, if, is it affecting demand or supply? Is corn affecting demand or supply? One of my two talkers right over there. What do you think? Corn affecting, is, this, is the study showing that corn's good for you affecting demand or supply? You're right, Yang, but I'm trying to put people on the spot and you ruin it for me. Uh, all right, so yes, this is affecting demand because it's a tastes and preferences thing, right? So this is the determinant here is tastes and preferences. And it's resulted in an increase in demand. And so an increase in demand also shown as a shift to the right in demand. But that's only half the... Half the story but let's finish our process right let's finish our process because that's our four-step process we should finish it so the second process we're figuring out if demand or supply the third step of the process is figuring what direction to change right it's going to have a positive direction because more people are eating corn because it's good for you last part is labeling the new equilibrium price and the new equilibrium quantity and then showing the direction that they take in the new equilibrium Make sense? Make sense? Okay. So the second part, weather has been perfect. There's been a above and beyond crop of corn this year for corn producers, corn farmers. Is this going to affect demand or supply? So we got to go back to those particular determinants, right? The determinants of demand, tastes and preferences. Is this affecting tastes and preferences of consumers? No. Is it affecting the income of consumers, right? Corn's a normal good. I'll give you that one, right? As people buy more money, they, they buy more corn. Or as people buy more money. As people make more money, they, uh, they earn more. They demand more corn. Jeez. Um, let's see. Uh, is this, does this have to do with any related goods? You know what I mean? Like things that people might substitute for corn or things that people might eat with corn? No, it doesn't have to do with that. Does it have to do with the price of corn in the future? Is expectations about the price of corn in the future? No, it doesn't have to do with that. So it doesn't fit in any one of those determinants of demand. So then we go to the supply and we say, well, is it part of our input costs? No, not really part of our input costs. 
What about natural conditions? Yes, it is. It's our natural condition one, right? So this is the one where, you know, it talks about, you know, if you have a outdoor venue for weddings and it rains all summer, the supply is going to shift to the right or to the left, right? There's going to be a decrease in supply if you have an outdoor venue for weddings and, you know, you don't have good weather that year. Um, similar with, you know, snow sports, right? Mountains and stuff like that. You know, natural conditions impact the amount of lift passes that they can provide any given year. Similarly, natural conditions obviously affect agriculture. So bumper year, weather has been perfect. That means that we're going to have a, so this is a natural conditions determinant. And this is going to cause my supply curve to shift up. Or the other way to think of that is my supply curve to shift to the right. And so now we label this new equilibrium, this third equilibrium. Triple star. All right, now we, we take a break. We, we take a pause and we evaluate what the heck is going on here, right? So <clears throat> when we have a single shift, very easy for us to make some conclusions about what happens to the price and the quantity. When we have a double shift, things start to become a bit more ambiguous. We start to lose some of the predictive power of the model. And this is part of the reason why all models are toy models, all models have simplifications in them. The more we start to complicate them, the less tractable they become in the conclusions that we can make, right? So this particular one, let's look first, since it's easy, let's look at what's happening with quantity. So from Q star one, this initial equilibrium that we have right here, right? From Q star one here, we end up increasing our quantity to Q double star. And then the next shift gets us from Q double star to Q triple star. So this shift had an increase in the quantity. This shift had an increase in the quantity. So when we add those up together, we get a double increase in the quantity. And that's exactly what we see. So unambiguously, we know quantity has increased because of these two events. Taste and preferences and natural conditions. Now, the tricky part is what's happening with our price. So again, let's go walk through. We're at this initial equilibrium. We're at P star. We have the first demand shift to taste and preferences that increases our price. We have a second shift. Weather has been perfect. That decreases our price. So this one, not so clear. We have an increase in the price. And we have a decrease in the price. So when we add these up, we end up with a big old question mark. We have no idea what happens to prices. They could have gone up. They could have gone down. They could have stayed exactly the same. And the way in which I drew this, right, I have these shifts. If we look, you know, these shifts that I have, they're pretty much the same distance away from each other. And I did that on purpose. And then I also drew them with a right angle in between them, right? I drew them at a slope of one and negative one. So I did that purposefully because if you do that, if you keep your lines fairly 45 degrees, and if you keep the shifts the same magnitude, then what happens when you do the graphs is going to be the same thing that happens when I do the graphs, which is you come up with a new equilibrium that's right on top of the old equilibrium. This should be a huge red flag. This situation happening and having both of these in the same area should be a big red flag for you to warn yourself from saying prices have not changed. Prices are exactly the same. That's not true. Your graph is tricking you. 
makes it seem like prices have not changed and that they're exactly the same. But in actuality, given the information that we are given, we don't know if price increased or decreased. So let's real quick just talk about why we don't know. Well, let's say, let's say that our supply curve shifted by much more than what I modeled here, right? Let's say that our supply curve shifted tremendously. 